Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here. We're going to have a great show. Today, we're going to talk about acute interstitial pneumonia, or otherwise known as AIP. And it's that time of year when the dust gets rolling, cattle are in the yards, and, and we start to see these late day deads in our feeder cattle. So I want to talk about that, so stay tuned. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Thanks for joining me today on Doc Talk. You're stuck with me. Uh, no guest, and we're gonna talk about atypical or acute interstitial pneumonia. It used to be atypical interstitial pneumonia. It's now called acute interstitial pneumonia. But this is a disease that has been around forever. This disease occurs, and, and I'll just kind of classify when we see this disease. Based on our data at PAC, Production Animal Consultation, which I'm a veterinarian and, and owner of, um, what we see at Production Animal Consultation is that we see AIPs occur more in the summer than any other season of the year. So as we start to see increase in, in large number of cattle that have that are long day on feed or or have been in the feed yard for a while or getting close to to slaughter we see it during the hot times of the year and we also see it when we have dust okay it doesn't mean that you won't have an interstitial pneumonia case during the fall during the winter or during the spring but summer is when we see most of them w which kind of cattle do we see these in the most the most of the time we see acute interstitial pneumonia in cattle that have been on feed for a while. Uh, there has been report that there is a higher uh, 
a predilection of heifers or a higher prevalence of AIP deaths in heifers than in steers. And, and, and so, and it's during the summer. So when we get to the summer, we start to see long day cattle and we start to see them having difficulty breathing, there becomes a higher chance that there would be acute interstitial pneumonia. So how does this affect the cattle? So the clinical signs of acute interstitial pneumonia, as the name says, it comes on very quickly. And, and so we'll have cattle that are doing fine and then you walk out there and here is a large animal in the pen that's ha that is in, in, in very, very high respiratory distress. These animals will have a sway back, they'll have their elbows out, they'll be trying to help themselves breathe with abdominal breathing, they'll have open mouth breathing, and they'll have a lot of saliva or a lot of, of slobber. So when we, when we find these animals, generally speaking, they're searching shade, uh, they have a difficulty in moving. They'll often be, be located near the water tanks because these animals, again, they're having a difficulty in breathing. They're also heat stressed. And so these animals are looking for a way to alleviate the heat stress by the evaporative cooling off the water of the water tank and they just want to get a drink. But as we will find and as we talk about what the, the physiology and the pathology that's going on within these animals of interstitial pneumonia, we're gonna see that these animals are in, in a type of respiratory disease that's not caused by bacteria. It's maybe once in a while caused by a virus, but most of the time it's due to some sort of lung insult or, or some sort of, of damage that's done to the lungs that generally we have to go through some type of healing process and repair. We're not fighting against a bug, we're fighting against like a skin abrasion, only it's on the lungs. We're gonna take a break here. When we come back to Doc Talk, we're gonna talk more about AIP, and we're gonna talk about what's going on inside that animal. Thanks for joining us. Hey, welcome to Cattle First, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. There are two reasons why animals get sick. Overwhelming dose of a pathogen or a suppressed immune system. Number one cause of a suppressed immune system is stress. We need to make sure that we decrease the stress of cattle. Low stress cattle handling, acclimating these cattle when they come to your facility, making sure that cattle can trust you. So building trust with cattle, just like you would with a dog, or a horse on your property is vitally important because animals that don't trust you won't show you clinical signs. Once you gain those cattle's trust, all of a sudden one of them says, hey, I'm not feeling good. Take me to the hospital and treat me. Otherwise, they think you're a predator and they mask their, their, their clinical signs and you don't catch them. This has been Cattle First by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson and we're thankful that you joined us today. Um, as you can see, I've changed spots, but I still have my Kansas roots and my Kansas background on the, the stage. I've been very fortunate to, to move back home to Iowa and become the department head of animal science. And so if you're looking for a home for a child or a grandchild, or if it's you, 
uh, our doors are always open here at Iowa State, and we're here to serve the, the industries, and we're here to, to serve Iowans. So um, talking about acute interstitial pneumonia, and when we think about acute interstitial pneumonia, this, is, this comes on rapidly, at least when we see it in the cattle, it comes on rapidly. And right now, or, or during the summertime, we're starting to see more and more of these animals. Again, as I described it, late day cattle, heifers, uh, and, and heat stress. And, and so what's going on inside the animal is this. There are two types of acute interstitial pneumonia. And the first one is what we used to define as fog fever in cows. And fog fever was when we would turn cows out onto lush forages, usually on a foggy morning and, and on a riverbank or something. And those cattle would consume those lush forages and they would be really, really heavy in, a, in one of our amino acids called tryptophan. The cattle would consume that grass. The tryptophan would get uh, converted to 3-methylindol in the rumen. Sorry for the chemistry, but I, I did take a lot of it. It gets converted to 3-methylindol, which then gets absorbed across the, the wall of the rumen, and it winds up in the lungs. That 3-methylindol gets converted to a toxin in the lungs, 3-mean, and that starts to destroy the little lining of the inside of the lungs. So you can see here, this is the histology of what a normal lung would look like, and you can see all this white area. That's where air is, and the little thin lines are the cells where the gas exchange, where oxygen comes into the body and where CO2 goes out. However, when we inflame those thin little membranes, those things get swollen. And when those things get swollen, as seen in this picture, what happens is there's no place for the air. And so when we get this toxin, 3-mean, from the tryptophan, from the lush forage, or we get some irritant that causes these pneumocytes or these thin strands of membranes in the lungs to be, be, uh, get angry or get inflamed, they swell. And as those swell, we lose the capacity where the oxygen comes into the lungs. So this isn't the lungs filling up with fluid. These are the cells within the lungs swelling up and, and displacing the place where normally we would have air. So when we take a look at these lungs from the outside, what we find are these big swollen lungs that barely fit in the, the chest cavity. And so when these animals try to take a breath, there's just no capacity. And so they can't exhale either. So, so one thing to understand, if you hear a noise during inspiration, it's the upper respiratory tract, like your nose or your trachea. If it's lower respiratory tract, you hear it when they expire or expiration. Uh, uh, and it's kind of that expiratory grunt, meaning it's in the lungs. And these AIP calves, they definitely have an expiratory grunt. When we come back, we're going to talk about acute interstitial pneumonia and ARDS as they relate between humans and cattle. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. You can always email me at Corey at SureCropFertilizers.com and with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. No one plans to get sick or injured, but when life happens, it's important you and your family are protected. Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans are there to provide continued health care coverage to meet your needs. Choose from a broad range of individual and family plans. And if you're over 65, we have options for you too. 
Learn more at kfbhealthplans.com or contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're going to find some really interesting stuff, like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story, and we'd love to have you. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here. Glad you joined us. We're here in Ames, Iowa. We're shooting in our new studio here in Iowa, but our home base is still Silver Lake, Kansas. So you can come see me in, in Ames, or you can come see Heather and Kelly in, in Silver Lake, or meet us on the interstate somewhere in between, because we don't let the grass grow underneath our feet very long. And so we're getting back out. We're seeing the public and, and enjoying being back out in the country. Um, we're not going to let this COVID get us down. Um, that said, we're going to talk about AIPs. We're seeing AIPs in feedlots. So I talked about the acute interstitial pneumonia from the fog fever, but then we have the one that's in the feedlot, and I think this one is more of an acute respiratory distress syndrome, which means I don't think this is from a feed and from a metabolite and, and, and that being absorbed and, and the toxin in the lungs, but I think that there are different ways, and as we look at the human uh, medicine, which there is a, a syndrome called acute respiratory distress syndrome. 50% of people that suffer from pancreatitis suffer from acute respiratory distress syndrome. And what happens is the lipase that breaks down fats in your stomach that are secreted by, or in the intestine that's secreted by the pancreas, when you get an inflamed, inflamed pancreas, the lipase gets in the blood, it goes to your lungs, it attacks those, that thin string of, of cells that I talked about earlier causes them to swell up. It's an irritation and it causes this acute respiratory distress syndrome. There is a, a film or lining on those lungs and they have seen that in humans that aspirate water, that as you, you get water in your lungs, if you get too much, it can actually wash that lining away, which irritates those cells and they swell up. Now, if you choke on a little spit or choke on a little water, don't go run to the emergency room. It's more of, a, a, of an aspiration of, of significance, okay? Uh, aspiration of vomit. Uh, another one that they use sheep today to study it in humans is humans that suffer from burn, like in a fire, and are exposed to cotton smoke get this, this process. And so what they'll do is they'll put sheep under anesthesia and they'll cause a heat stress or on their skin at the medical schools and then expose those sheep to, to smoke. And as they inhale that smoke, it causes the irritation combined with the heat stress to cause those, those cells again to swell. Um, sepsis, so bacterial infections in the blood can lead to, to ARDS. Uh, bacterial pneumonia in the lungs, endotoxemia, different things like this. At the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is this. There is no one cause, in my opinion, to acute interstitial pneumonia in feedlot cattle. We have 60 different known causes of ARDS in humans, and I think there are probably 60 to 100 uh, causes in feedlot cattle. And so trying to pinpoint one reason of causing it or, or removing it is, in, is next to impossible. But I do think that there are some, some things that, that lead us to seeing those. And as we come back from the break, I'm going to talk a little bit more about things that we see maybe associated with ARDS or AIP in feedlot cattle. We're sure glad you're watching Doc Talk uh, this afternoon, and we'll come back to you after this message. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane, 
For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP. That brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. These days, no one can afford to take the risk of being without financial protection against high health care costs, not even for a few days. Kansas Farm Bureau health plans offer short-term health care coverage to fill in those temporary gaps. Short-term health plans can provide you with medical coverage when you are between health plans, helping lower your potential financial risk. Learn more at kfbhealthplans.com or contact a Farm Bureau financial services agent near you. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here. Thanks for joining me. And so as we talk about AIP and we talk about, uh, you know, the two things, the two questions we get a lot are, uh, why do we get them in the feedlot? What can we do to, to treat these animals and what can we do to prevent them? And, you know, when I start to think about hot cattle, cattle that can't, there are some cattle that just can't regulate their body heat. And, and so how do we identify those animals? How do we make sure we provide them shade? There's not a lot known about shade for prevention, but I think it's something we could examine. And we could compare monoslope barns with, with full shade coverage versus uh, open air barns without. The other one is, is how often we, we recover our dust. You know, we, we need to be recovering our dust. When we feed calves, we recover our dust once a year. When we feed steers, uh, yearlings, we're, we're turning those yards over twice. And so we're harvesting the dust twice, meaning less dust available to be kicked up in the air and be inhaled. Uh, so I think that those are some things, feeding more heifers versus more steers, uh, a lot of things in epidemiology, but we just simply don't know. Okay, so I think that's the first thing. If you feed cattle or if you're a cattle feeder, trying to pinpoint one etiology, whether it's not enough water tank space, not enough uh, stress, heat stress abatement, uh, sex or gender of the animals, there's just a lot of confounding variables. But we do know from human resources that there are 60 known etiologies ranging from dust and smoke inhalation to water aspiration to heat stress, and then the other one is, if they've had respiratory disease, that could be a precursor or something that could be predictive of seeing AIP later in the year. Is that related to the environment of feeding calves and having more uh, respiratory disease, or vice versa? As far as treatment goes, treatment is, is highly ineffective. Uh, that some animals, it's about a 50% case, fa case fatality rate, meaning 50% of the animals that get AIP are gonna die and 50% are gonna resolve their, their issues. One thing about that we have done is when we know that these are AIP animals, we can take these animals to emergency slaughter. 
This is not a, a, a disease system. This is a more of a, a toxin or just like a, a reaction to an irritant. So those animals can be slaughtered. So we will load those animals up, take them to a local slaughter facility and, and salvage slaughter those animals so that, that we can, can recoup some of the funds and, and obviously the natural resources. So at the end of the day, there's no known treatment. Antibiotics don't work because this is not a bacterial infection. Some people have said maybe dexamethasone because you saw that that helps with COVID. These are totally unrelated. Um, and, and there really is no advantage of doing such a thing. But the, 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 the big thing is, is that don't, you know, we got to help the animals alleviate heat stress. We've got to provide them water tank space and we got to collect the dust. I think those are our, our three biggies heading into the summer um, and thinking about uh, atypical or acute interstitial pneumonia based on human research. Um, work with your local veterinarian. And, and if you want to know more about what we do here on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Iowa State University, and I'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Join Ag AM in Kansas, everyone, Monday through Friday mornings on local stations throughout the state of Kansas and every day on your favorite social media. Monday kicks off with Dr. Dan Thompson on Doc Talk as he's joined by leading veterinarians and nutritionists in food animal production. They discuss current production challenges and tips on how to deal and prepare for those challenges. Tuesdays on Farm Factor, it is our friends here at KFRM Radio with interviews from top experts in agriculture. Wednesday, it is a little of Kansas history with Deb Goodrich on Around Kansas. Thursday, Britton Rucker brings us Ag Etc. This day is filled with agriculture research and ag happenings around the Midwest, including our new Young Leaders in Ag segment. We end the week with authentic ag and updates from your local checkoff programs. Make sure to check your local listings or like us on Facebook and Twitter at Ag AM in Kansas and on YouTube at Farming Unlimited TV so you never miss an episode. Thanks for watching. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need.